Welcome to the Connected Podcast brought to you by FL Full Orlando Montreal. My name is Yero Smilikic and I'm joined today by our guest Michelin Mayette. Hi. Who is, hello Michelin, <laughs> who is the VP of People and Culture at PVisio, an affiliate of FL Full Orlando mm -hmm. here in Montreal, Quebec. And today we're going to be covering a very interesting topic, mm -hmm. uh, recruitment. So before we dive into that and why it's important for every business to uh, emphasize on recruitment, especially this day and age, uh, maybe Michelin, you can give us a brief introduction mm -hmm. about yourself. Sure. So, I mean, I've been with the firm for over 10 years now in uh, the People and Culture Division. So the People and Culture Division is basically our HR consulting division. Okay. So what we do is we provide uh, various HR services to mainly small, medium-sized business, but we need to do projects for companies that are larger, so a thousand employees or more sometimes as well. Okay, great. Yeah. So let's dive right into it. So why is this recruitment topic mm -hmm. extremely relevant and more trendy and popular now than ever before? Mm -hmm. Well, I think the main thing is that companies, again, whether it's smaller companies or larger corporations, are just having a lot of trouble right now filling their positions. So a lot of companies are coming to us to you know, say, what do we do? What are we doing wrong right now? How come we're having so much trouble? Uh, finding qualified candidates for our positions. And where does that trouble come from? Mm -hmm. I would say there's really two reasons. So one is just a question of mathematics. Um, if you look at the unemployment rate right now, if you look at January, for example, it was actually at an all-time low. So it was the lowest rate at 4.9% um, since they actually started taking comparable statistics in 1979. And that's like uh, industry-wide? Like uh, yeah, that's industry-wide. So there's okay. some industries that have more difficulty than others. Uh, so there's that. There's also just the demographics of the population. So right now there's more people who are leaving the workforce for retirement than people who are joining the workforce. Um, the birth rate is very low, so it's 1.7 uh, per, per woman, and we have about 50,000 new immigrants coming into Quebec every year. Mm -hmm. um, but if you look at, we're adding 90,000 positions a year, you can see just mathematically why it's so difficult right now to find people. So how do you find the right candidate? Mm -hmm. Like what should an entrepreneur be doing? Yeah, I mean the second part of that, that answer, I guess, is also to look at how companies are actually recruiting. So what are they doing to put themselves out there? Um, you know, a lot of companies are still in the frame of mind that the candidate has the biggest job to do in selling themselves to the company and forget the job they have to do on their end of selling themselves to the candidate. Um, there's very few active job seekers right now. If you look at the, you know, the people who are available uh, to work, so people who are already occupying positions or people who are actively looking and so who are unemployed, there's about 12% of those that are actively looking for jobs. So companies that are trying, like we call it post and pray, so they just post a job and they pray that somebody applies on their position, mm -hmm. and they're only they're only reaching 12% of those workers. And some you, of those workers, sorry to yeah. interrupt, some of those workers might already have positions, so they're not necessarily mm -hmm. as motivated. To yeah. Well, the 12% is really people who are motivated, so they're not happy in their okay. job right now. Okay. They're actively seeking out other work. You have maybe 15% of people who just wouldn't leave for anything. They're very happy where they are, they're very loyal for whatever reason, and, and they want to stay where they are. So this leaves about 73% of available workers who could leave okay. for the right opportunity. So these are the people that are harder to reach. So it takes, like they're not actively looking, so you have to be actively going out to reach those people. Mm -hmm. And how do, you, how do you go about doing that? Is yeah. it like your website that you need to be mm -hmm. up? I mean, for sure, but people have to get to your website first to want to to want to apply. So, how do you get them to you to come look at this type of thing? Like, what are your what are you offering to candidates, basically? And I mean, right now we're lucky that we have all these, you know, social media. We could reach pretty much everybody who's working. Most people have a profile somewhere online, uh, but it's a very time-consuming process. So, right now, that's how we fill most of our positions is not by just posting the position, but by actually looking at hundreds of profiles online mm -hmm. and to figure out which candidates seem to fit the bill to reach out to them, uh, you know, and hopefully get a response back and then try to generate some interest in the position. So that's just yeah. trying to get them in the door. So once you have their yeah. foot in the door, mm -hmm. what are some of the things that you should be doing uh, as part of the interview process and the screening? Yeah. 
because so I mean, these are people who are happily employed right now. So yeah, you could get you could generate some interest, but then I mean, right away, just like you said, the website. They're going to go check out the website of the company. They're going to go see your social media profiles of the company. They're going to go look at your employees' social media profiles as well. Uh, there's sites like Rate Your Employer. They can go see what other people are saying about working for you. So these are all really important things for an employer to look at. So you can bring the candidate to you, but they have to want to take the next step. Okay, and you have to actually, you can't just talk the talk with these mediums, you have to actually mm -hmm. walk the walk. So what you're yeah. promising to them, I imagine you should be able to deliver as well. Yeah. You don't want to create a fake environment because mm -hmm. the cost for hiring an employee yeah. and training them and then having them leave once they find out in, in a few weeks that it's not what you, mm -hmm. you depicted uh, in the interviews, I think uh, could yeah. be very, very detrimental for a, a business. 100%. You don't want to be misleading also. It's not really advantageous to you either. Uh, but it's not great even for the work environment for your other employees to see people coming in and leaving because it's not what was promised. Uh, they'll start asking themselves why they're sticking around. Okay, who would you recommend to take part in, in the interview process? I guess, mm -hmm. let's say it's a company uh, of 10 people or mm -hmm. 20 people. Yeah. Uh, typically, you, you would have in, in that size of the company, the owner, operator, president who's active in the business mm -hmm. take part in an interview, assuming it's a pretty important position. Yeah. Uh, at that stage, any position should be pretty important. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah. who else would you say it should be a one-on-one? -on -one? Should it be a two-on-one? -on -one? Normally, I prefer having at least two people in the interview. You can get two different perspectives on somebody, um, or to have at least a second interview, possibly. I mean, you don't want to make the process too long either, uh, but I think it's good to have somebody who um, you know, who is going to be a little bit more maybe impartial sometimes, so just to have two different perspectives. I mean, if you're talking about a company with 10 employees, maybe there's no other manager who could sit in the interview. It could right. be a colleague if it's appropriate, but if not, it could be an external advisor. So it could be, it could be their accountant sometimes or uh, an external HR consultant. Okay, because uh, it could mm -hmm. get, I mean, uh, politically incorrect in the sense of talking mm. about salary and compensation yeah. if there's someone that's going to be at that same level at the table yeah. uh, that you're looking to hire. Exactly. So I think yeah. you need to be uh, wary of, uh, of that aspect for 100%. sure. So this is where someone like yourself could mm. come in and help in the process, I imagine. Uh, yeah, no, 100%. I mean, we, we do recruitment for companies, so we'll uh, do sourcing online. So we really, you know, we kind of customize our approach to every client. Um, and some companies just ask us to sit in on, in the interview process with them as well if they have their own candidates. And what industries do you yeah. focus? Is there any particularity? No, we're actually quite varied. We act really like an outsource HR service to a company. So we would act just like their internal HR uh, department would act. So we would help. We could help with revealing any type of position that they need. And it's really the extent of our involvement will vary depending on whether we feel we have the. Uh, capabilities of assessing the candidate properly. So maybe, uh, for example, in technology, we're not experts in programming, for example. So maybe we'll source candidates for them, but we'll encourage the uh, client to do the interview process themselves. Okay, once it gets yeah. into the technical exactly. side of things. Exactly, yeah. Okay, yeah. good. Well, what we'll do is we'll put a link uh, to the PVZO website and Michelin's uh, biography at the end of this video. Mm -hmm. uh, so make sure to check that out. Michelin, thank you so much for spending the time with us today. Great. Thank you, Yara. And uh, thank you, viewers, for tuning in. And stay tuned for some more interesting videos.